At four o'clock in the morning of September the 12th, an explosion happened outside one of the houses in western Ukrainian town of Chop. This house turned out to belong to the family of Yacheslav Pivovarnik, who, according to the Ukrainian investigation, ordered Russian journalist Arkady Babchenko's murder in May. Babchenko's assassination was famously prevented by Ukraine's security service, or SBU. Pivovarnik's mother, who reported the explosion to the police that morning, said that an explosive device was thrown into her yard. Nobody was injured as a result. She heard an explosion in the yard, and when she came out, she only saw the leftovers of the explosive device. Two people lived in that house. At the time of the incident, only the woman was inside, because around 2 a.m. the man left the premises. Law enforcement officers have not released details saying that this would hinder the investigation. Residents of CHOP tell us two possible motives. The owners of the house having big debts and their son's criminal life. The son is, of course, the 34-year-old Vyacheslav Pivovarnik. In 2008, Pivovarnik moved to Kiev and then to Moscow. A man with such name and surname was suspected to have ordered the murder of Babchenko. He was first mentioned to be connected to the case by Boris Herman, his former business partner who the SBU has named as the organizer of the assassination. <laughs> It's a Ukrainian citizen, his name is Vyacheslav Pivovarnik. He's in charge of organizing terror attacks and military coups in Ukraine in Putin's private fund. After the explosion in CHOP, a video appeared on a YouTube channel named Vyacheslav Pivovarnik. The man in the video, who claims to be Pivovarnik, says that the main reason Ukraine's security service staged Babchenko's murder was to spread fear among journalists in Ukraine. He also claims that he's been working for the SBU since 2010 and that Herman was forced to testify in the Babchenko case. We went to the town of Chop to find out whether the man in the video is indeed Vyacheslav Pivovarnik. Nobody answers the door. We see law enforcers nearby. We ask the neighbors whether they recognize Pivovarnik in the video. The last time I saw Vyacheslav Pivovarnik was three, four years ago in CHOP. I know him because he was a pupil at school number. My personal opinion is that it's not him. Perhaps there is external resemblance, but the voice is completely different and the appearance could have been altered with makeup. But one thing we cannot really understand, knowing him from childhood as a calm, friendly, kind-hearted boy. Yes, he was a programmer, that's what he studied. It, but that he was a spy, that he did such things, wanted to assassinate someone and all that, we won't ever believe that. After we find out the address of Andriana Yanitska, Pivovarnik's sister, we go there. Her husband answers the door. He refuses to talk about Pivovarnik. No, I don't know him. You don't know him? Yes, the last time I saw him was 10 years ago. Did you see the video where he... Which video? On the internet. I didn't see any video. I don't want to hear about it. I know this. This is Zir's problems. Go to their house, watch and investigate. We return to the house where Pivovarnik's parents supposedly live. After a couple of hours spent outside, we finally catch Stepan Repanets, Pivovarnik's stepfather. He refuses to speak on camera, but confirms that the man in the video is his son Vyacheslav Pivovarnik. Did you have any doubts whether it's him? No, zero doubts. So you recognized him straight away? Do I not know him? Even the t-shirt is his. It's his favorite one, by the way. The stepfather says that the day prior to the video recording, Pivovarnik visited the parents in CHOP. It is the explosion in their yard which pushed the man to record the video address, he says. After the explosion, Stepan Repenets says he did not speak with his son because Vyacheslav changed his phone number and left the country. Stepan does not believe the accusations made against his son, says he knows Boris Herman well, but does not understand why he felt the need to slander his son. <laughs> In the video, Pivovarnik claims that he was hired by the SBU, by Alexander Skipalsky, former deputy head of the organization. 
But Skipaisky told Hermaske that it's not true. I don't know this so-called pivovarnik. If we consider that Russian state security service is behind him, they should have checked that Skiparsky no longer worked for SBU in that year before naming my surname. They should have named a different date or come up with a different version. That's if Russia's state security service is behind it. Pivovarnik reportedly worked for the SBU under the guise of civic organization Civic Security Service of Ukraine. The man is listed as one of the founders of the organization. Hramatsky visited the address where it's registered. It's an apartment block, the residents of which have never heard of such organization. According to the SBU, the Russian State Security Service employees who were organizing Babchenko's murder were managed by Pivovarnik. Their list had 47 potential victims in Ukraine, including journalists and activists. Vyacheslav Pivovarnik faces up to 15 years in prison or even a life sentence. He stated in the video address that if anything threatens his or his relatives' lives, he will start publishing compromising materials. <laughs>